Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that first video. Now this video has got some real substance to it. There's a lot of material I'm going to throw at you. But you can always pause and rewind and fast forward. So take it at your own pace. What I'm going to be speaking to you about are the strengths of dyslexia. We have put it into a very easy acronym, which is basically taking the first letter of a bunch of words and creating a new word. It's called MIND, M-I-N-D. That's easy to remember. Each one stands for a different strength that dyslexics have. M, material reasoning. I, interconnected reasoning. N, narrative reasoning. D, dynamic reasoning. Don't worry. I'm going to explain all that in a second. The one thing to remember is that you've got two things that you can download from this session that can are essentially notes and a worksheet, okay? One is called the Mind Strength Review Handout, and the other one is the Mind Worksheet, okay? You'll find both of those in this lesson, and you can print those out and use them as a reference. You can go back and read them, okay? Now, what I'm talking about, that M-I-N-D, those mind strengths, comes from a book called The Dyslexic Advantage. Definitely get your parents to read this or listen to it yourself. What they describe are these four characteristics that we have that we do better than almost everybody else in the world. Now, the first one is called material reasoning. Have you ever seen a blueprint, which is a drawing of a building, but it's on a piece of paper? And have you looked at it, and all of a sudden in your mind, you can actually see what that building is going to look like? Almost like, like as if you're in a game of Minecraft. You've already built up that blueprint, and all of a sudden you can, you can see the house. And if I said, okay, now go to the back door, go through the kitchen, go up the stairs and turn left, what room is there? And you're like, well, it's the bathroom. That ability is something dyslexics have. Other people can do it, eh, they can do it okay, but you do it in an incredibly different way than most. The next one is I, interconnected reasoning. We as dyslexics, have an incredible way of looking at these pieces of information that don't seem to have any relationship. And we kind of go, wait a minute, huh, 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 and an idea pops out. I'll give you an example. Imagine this woman is standing in the rain on the corner of a street in, in, in downtown Boston or New York, and she's waiting for a cab, and there's no cab coming, and she's freezing. Well, right up above her in an apartment building is a guy who doesn't have a job, he's got a car, and he's thinking, ah, oh, man, how can I earn some money? They've each got a cell phone. And we as dyslexics say, wait a minute, what if we made it so that they could communicate and he could get in his car and give it a ride, and what do you get? Uber. This is how we think. Most people say, oh, I don't know, I don't know, he's just going to not have a job and she's going to get wet. No, no, no. We can see these ways of bringing together these different ingredients and creating a new idea that other people haven't considered. Narrative reasoning, M-I-N-D, narrative reasoning. Narrative reasoning is our ability to tell a story, to remember things in our life with like such detail that it's like we're reliving them as we speak. How many of you you wanted to get, you wanted your parents to get you a new bike, okay? Now you didn't just go up and say, hey, dad, I need a bike. You said, dad, imagine this. If I had a bike, you wouldn't have to drive me to baseball practice. I could just get on that bike and you can stay home, drink your cup of coffee and read the newspaper. What's the difference between, hey, I want a bike and what I just explained? We're telling a story. One of the things that dyslexics do is we have the ability to tell stories, maybe through writing stories or speaking, 
but we have ways to make our ideas really compelling. Compelling is another word for like getting people to really get excited about what we're talking about. I bet, you, I bet you're thinking right now of things where you've told pretty good stories, right? The last one is dynamic reasoning, okay? This one's a little bit harder to understand. We have, as dyslexics, the ability to identify things that have happened in the past, understand them, and then almost predict the future. I'll give you an example. We've learned probably about erosion at some point in school, right? Rain drops onto a mountain, all that rain comes together and it slowly carves a path which turns into a river which finds its way to the ocean, right? We're able, we weren't there to watch that whole process happen, but we understand, okay, I see all this rain came together, carved this through rock and then this creates a river. Now, because we understand that, we're then able to almost fast forward that process into the distant future. Okay, well, what if more rain comes down and carves a bigger path and this river grows and this river turns into a lake and, oh my gosh, this river that I'm looking at right now will one day be an ocean. Now, you think to yourself, well, can't everybody do that? Yeah, they can do that to a certain degree. But dyslexics have the ability to identify things that have happened even if they weren't there to witness it and then create a prediction for what's going to happen in the future. I don't want to say it's like fortune telling, but it's kind of like kind of like seeing the future based on the past. Now, I want to end this. This is a lot of material. I want to end this with one very important thing to consider. You may be sitting there going, I don't think I have any of these. Like, I'm definitely dyslexic, but I can't do any of those. I have been developing those MIND strengths that I have my entire length, my entire life. You are in the process of identifying what those strengths are. And if you don't see them now, that's okay. During this course, we're going to be touching upon these different MIND strengths. And I think you're going to start to go, oh, wait a minute. I remember what he was talking about. I'm starting to see an idea emerge that nobody else was seeing. What? Just like working out a muscle. Right now, your muscles may not be developed. Your MIND strength, those muscles, may not be developed. Doesn't mean they're not there. My job is to help expose you to those just like you go into the gym. Or it's like, it's like when Yoda gives Luke the lightsaber for the first time. He can't do anything, right? This is learning how to use your lightsaber, okay? So take it nice and easy. Rewind if you need to. Definitely use that worksheet and the handout that I mentioned earlier because it says everything I've just said now. See you in the next lesson.